Welcome to Free Thought Matters. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. We're executive directors of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Today we're talking about a compelling new play in Manhattan about clergy who have abandoned their faith. We'll be joined by philosopher and clergy project co-founder Daniel C. Dennett and by the play's creative consultant and theater producer Megan Kingery. The Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces Free Thought Matters, is the nation's largest association of free thinkers, that's atheists, agnostics, and other non-believers. We invite you to join us in our vital work to keep our secular government free from religious influence. Become a member at ffrf.org or ask for a complimentary copy of our newspaper, Free Thought Today. Freedom depends on free thinkers. Watch prior episodes of Free Thought Matters on FFRF's YouTube channel. The Unbelieving is a new play currently running at an off-Broadway theater, 59 East 59. The Unbelieving is about clergy, ministers, and priests who lose their faith and become non-believers. The play is based on interviews conducted for the book Caught in the Pulpit, Leaving Belief Behind, written by Daniel C. Dennett and the qualitative researcher Linda Lascola. We're very happy to have the eminent philosopher Dan Dennett with us today. He's the co-director of the Center for Cognitive Studies and the Austin B. Fletcher Professor of Philosophy at Tufts University. He's the author of many popular books, including Consciousness Explained, Freedom Evolves, From Bacteria to Bach and Back, The Evolution of Minds, and he's the author of the bestseller, Breaking the Spell, Religion as a Natural Phenomenon. He's an honorary director of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and he has won our Emperor Has No Clothes Award. Daniel Dennett is also, with myself and Richard Dawkins, a co-founder of The Clergy Project, which assists pastors and ministers and rabbis and imams who find themselves caught in the pulpit. Thanks for joining us again, Dan. Good to be with you again. And we're also pleased to have with us today the creative consultant and theater producer for The Unbelieving. Megan Kingery is a Broadway and film producer. She was executive director for the film The Subject and co-producer of the musical Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812, among many other achievements. She's largely responsible for shepherding the play The Unbelieving to the stage. Thank you for joining us today, Megan. Wonderful to be here. Sounds like an exciting play, and we're looking forward to seeing it ourselves. But we want to start with you, Dan Dennett, and maybe you can give us some background about the clergy project. This play, The Unbelieving, is based on the book that you co-authored with Linda Lascola called Caught in the Pulpit, Leaving Belief Behind. How did that book come about? Well, back in the, in the early part of the 21st century, I was worrying about the sort of religious right and uh, theocratic moves in the United States, and I decided I should do something about it. And I wrote, I wrote an op-ed piece for the New York Times, uh, uh, inspired by the example of the Brights. And that opinion piece, op-ed piece, was the most sought after and reprinted and sent around piece they published that month. So a lot of people got in touch with me. They wanted me to take advantage of the uh, attention I had drawn to myself. So I, I wrote the book Bre uh, Breaking the Spell because I wanted to think about religion as a natural phenomenon. And in the course of writing that book, I didn't want to 
insult people or upset people gratuitously. I knew I was going to bother them. You know, I deliberately sought out deeply religious people, people who were famous among their friends and family for being deeply religious, and interviewed them in confidence and was surprised to learn that some of them didn't believe in God. And I thought, well, that's very interesting. They're in it for other reasons. They're in it for community, for good works, for, for tradition. And uh, I put a little bit about that in the book. And luckily, Linda Lascola, when she read the book, thought, I'll bet there's others out there. I'll bet there are pastors out there who are also unbelieving. And I bet we could find them. And thanks to you, Dan, uh, more than perhaps to anybody else, we did manage to locate half a dozen uh, closeted, non-believing clergy to participate in the first study. And I got some funding for that. And it was a tough research project to interview confidentially uh, non-believing clergy. And the initial report that we published on that drew so much good attention that just what we wanted to happen, happened. Other clergy began writing to us, to Linda and me, saying, well, those are five or six good stories, but you've got to hear mine, too. And in the end, Linda did over, over interviewed over 30 different clergy. And that was the, the, the result of that was the book uh, uh, caught in the pulpit. And now the play, The Unbelieving, which is based on those interviews. Uh, one of the luckiest days of my life was when Linda approached me to suggest this project. And I guess I should explain that uh, my co-host, Dan Barker, is a former um, evangelical minister, and you've been approached ever since you've written books about leaving religion by other ministers and priests and so on. Well, I got phone calls from ministers saying, I'm still in the pulpit, but do I, you know, I can't even tell you my name, but I need a, an exit strategy. And so Linda was able to talk to some of those very people. So now we'd like to turn to you, Megan Kingery. How did you happen to get involved in this project? I uh, am, was so lucky to be introduced to Dan through uh, a mutual friend of ours, Jerry Orstrom, who um, I know from some, some previous uh, work that I did in the science and startup community and who has now worked with me on several theater productions. But he said, you know, my friend Dan Dennett, uh, had been working on an adaptation of some of his work into a play, but they don't really know how to get it from page to stage, but you do. <laughs> and uh, that's how I got in touch with Linda and Marin and Dan. Marin Gazanica is the playwright who's been working to uh, adapt these very complex and confidential interviews into a work of theater. And so that's how I first got involved, and, and thankfully we now have this incredible production to look forward to. Wow. So, so how do you do that? How do you turn an interview in, or collection of interviews into a play? Thankfully, that's not my job. <laughs> but we have, um, you know, th there are a number of folks uh, who, who thankfully have been working on this incredibly hard, and Marin especially has been on this for the past eight years. Just in order for her to look at the original interview, she in fact had to take a special course to access uh, what was captured by Linda and Dan, because that's how deep the level of confidentiality was for this original study. Um, she then had to think about what is what is the drama here? What is the emotional truth here? And what is gonna be interesting to an audience to identify with. And, and for that, a lot of it is the intense loneliness that a lot of these folks were feeling and, and conflict about whether they could leave their communities, their families, and uh, whether this would break their whole life, essentially. And over the past couple of years, we also got together with the investigative theater company, The Civilians. And they're one of the only theater companies in the world that do exactly this type of theater, which is take interviews and make them into a dramatic work. And they've done this, um, you know, in fact, they worked with uh, evangelicals in the South previously on some of their works and had made a musical of the interviews that they did down there. 
So we thought this would be the perfect uh, partner for, for this project, and they have been. We've been really, really fortunate to work with them. Linda Lascola emailed me a couple of weeks ago. She said she's a, she was able to see some of the, what do you call it, the cold readings or the radio readings of it. The she, table readings. The table <laughs> readings, yeah. And she said that she's welling up with emotion listening, not just to the drama, but she said there's also some, some humor in, in these stories of um, priests. Uh, what can you tell us? Are they just priests and ministers or are there rabbis? Are there, do you know... We have priests, ministers, ministers, rabbis, nuns, um, and uh, we have uh, one imam. Um, but it, it, it's a we we actually went out and interviewed a few more folks to try and get some some more voices to to add because it was so difficult in the original study, as you know to find people that were willing to open up at the time. And yeah. of course, the clergy project now has grown to this um, large organization. But uh, some of what the play is talking about is just how intense it was for these folks in the original study to open up their hearts to someone they barely knew. And you know that that also is just part of this beautiful piece of theater is the intimacy of going to a stranger and saying, this is something that I have not told anyone in my life that I'm close to, but I need to tell someone, and so I'm going to tell you. Uh, it, it's really, really beautiful. And there are funny moments there, and, and it's, I would say it's very moving because it's also about people learning to find themselves and find uh, a way to express themselves that feels true to their heart and their convictions. And, and I guess we should say that, of course, this is now fictionalized correct? Somebody who is one race might be turned into another. Somebody who is one sex might become another. Um, they're not real names being used, correct? Every, everything in it is pretty much almost verbatim from, from, the, uh, from the dialogues that Linda, uh, from the interviews that Linda did. Um, it's not so much fictionalized as simply disguised. Disguised. Dramatized, I, I think, yeah. is a good word. So, it, exactly. We do have, there's a couple times where some interviews have been combined into, into one character, but a lot of what's said on stage is uh, translated directly from those interviews. So you won't see, there's only one scene where we do do some creative work. And that's where we see a group of people in the clergy project talking to each other. We we actually didn't want to make, sh we didn't want to take anything from the actual clergy project. So we took some words from the interviews to let those folks speak. Um, but it's it's all real world words from real people in real life. Let me add, we couldn't take anything from the real clergy project. But that's <laughs> exactly. Uh, neither neither Marin nor Linda nor nor Megan nor I are members of the clergy project, and so we can't, we can't <clears throat> listen on, on anything there. That's strictly confidential. That's right. It's only for m members, former members right. of the clergy or clergy caught in the pulpit. Well, for a brief moment, or for a few weeks or a couple of months there at the very beginning, Linda, and I think you, Dan, were in as administrators, but then you had to leave because it's, it's a... Oh, it's yeah. a it's, we didn't get in on any of the... Oh. We didn't get in on any of the heart-to-hearts, and we, we weren't supposed to. We should thank Dr. Dawkins, by the way, for, for the technical help. His foundation got the clergy project up and running. Yeah. And it's very well protected. It's a secure site. So uh, we have to take a break. Uh, we're talking with the philosopher Daniel C. Dennett and with the producer, theater producer Megan Kingery, about this Brand new play, which is which is running off Broadway. At, right now, we'll tell you more about it at, fi, at the 59 East 59th Theater called The Unbelieving. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist. When I first recorded that commercial back in 2014, being openly atheist in America was still fairly uncommon. Today, the fastest growing religious group in the country is the non-religious, especially among the young. That progress is heartening, but the religious pushback is fierce and the forces of Christian nationalism are well organized. Our progress won't continue unless we work together 
so that reason and our secular constitution will prevail. That's why I'm asking you to join the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founders intended. Please join the Freedom From Religion Foundation today. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. My name is Jarvis and I'm an out of the closet atheist. There are many reasons why I'm an atheist, but I'll start with the crudest explanation. I'm sure many of you have seen Clash of the Titans or The Immortals or 300, these blockbuster films about ancient Greek or Roman religion, which we now call mythology. But back then it wasn't mythology. It was very real for them. They genuinely believed that you had to put a coin in a person's mouth before they were buried so that they could pay for the literal ferry to the afterlife. Just as many people today believe that they should eat crackers and wine on a Sunday or that God wants women to hide their bodies under black burqas. Every religion that has ever existed, and there are many, have all believed that they were right, that their rituals and rules and beliefs were 100% correct. And they all thought they nailed it. But where are they today? Uh, if they're not completely forgotten, they're on the silver screen, amusing us with their sword fights, animal sacrifices, and oracles. The religions of today are the entertainment of tomorrow. Everyone, I hope, is an atheist about Zeus and Apollo, Juno and Poseidon. I just added Jesus and Muhammad to that list. And welcome back to Free Thought Matters. We're continuing our conversation about the new off-Broadway play, The Unbelieving. And we're talking with the creative consultant and theater producer for the play, Megan Kingery, and with philosopher Daniel C. Dennett, who wrote the book, Caught in the Pulpit, Leaving Belief Behind, the book co-authored with Linda Lascola, on which the play is based. So um, the, the play, tell us when the play is running. It's October through November, right? Our previews begin October 20th, and our official opening is October 27th, uh, and it'll be running through November 20th. So these people in New York City who are watching this should jump on the chance to see this. Megan, tell us about the cast, the direction, and the production. Absolutely. So as, as I said, we've been working with the award-winning theater company, The Civilians, along with director Steve Cawson, who's also the artistic director of The Civilians. Um, he uh, is transforming this work into something really, really brilliant. Uh, we have Nina Hellman, uh, our fantastic New York actress, who's going to be playing Linda Lascola. Ah, <laughs> and, uh, that's right. Uh, exactly. And uh, we have a wonderful, wonderful cast, including uh, Richard Topol, Dan Dominguez, Jeff Beal, um, and, and several others who are going to be portraying all of the folks um, that, that we interview. One or two people will be playing more than one character. Well, do you need somebody to come up and play a preacher on the stage? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, just kidding. Perhaps a guitar playing preacher? <laughs> he well, does piano. For me, it's piano playing. But, okay. I'm, but we're going to come see the play in the uh, first or second week of, of November. We're really looking forward. What are we going to see? Well, it, Will it be, what, what's the stage look like? I don't want to give away too much, uh. but we have wonderful music that's going to be underlying the whole show, uh, including liturgical music from all of the different backgrounds of the different clergy folks. Uh, we are going to have someone speaking in tongues. We are going to have laughing. We're going to have crying. We're going to have uh, a good time. And so again, um, besides these philosophical and emotional challenges, how, how is their humor? First of all, uh, these clergy are adept at dealing with their parishioners, and they they have developed ways of of sidestepping issues and of of being diplomatic. Uh -huh. And as you know, the line between diplomacy and flat out lying. Uh, is not really a problem. And, and so there's some 
interesting and amusing and wry reflections on this, some funny examples. Linda, as an interviewer, is just brilliant. She, she goes right to the heart of what people are thinking about. And you have to remember, these people are talking to Linda, whom they've never met before, and they're pouring their hearts out to her. They, she earns their trust and gets them to say things they haven't told anybody. They, sometimes they haven't told their spouse, they haven't told their children, they haven't told anybody in the world until they talk to her. And the relief that they get from talking it over with Linda is one of the great joys of the production. Well, that's why she's called a qualitative researcher as opposed to somebody who just does broad surveys. She meets face, face to face and spends a lot of time and digs deep into the personal stories of these people, right? Exactly, yes. Uh. It has to really be something for her to go to this play and see herself <laughs> portrayed and probably know line for line um, what the people had said. So, Dan, you, you have written, actually, you've written some books about playing with language and, uh, and using language in different tropes and that. So, is that primarily what interests you in all of this, or are there deeper philosophical issues that you're interested in as well? Well, ever since I wrote the book Breaking the Spell, I've been telling people who will listen that religion is dying. Let's let it die gracefully. Let's help the people who are hurt. Let's take them seriously. Let's comfort them as we can. Let's respect them and help them out of their fantasies. And I think this play can go a long way in that. I think it shows that these are real people with real aspirations. They, they want to be good. That's why they got into the clergy in the first place. They wanted to lead good lives and help other people. And now they're trapped. And now they're trying to find a way out of the trap. I think the message is very deep and, and very inspiring, really. It's, come on, join the clergy project. We'll help you get on your feet, and we won't, we won't sneer at you or laugh at you because you got taken in as a youth with some very, very effective propaganda. Well, I know from talking with other members of the Clergy Project that they have different reasons for why they want to leave the ministry or leave even the faith or their belief in God. but. In general, most of them say it was intellectual. It was the reliability of the Bible or the dealing with the arguments for God or morality. And, and, and those are kind of deep issues to deal with in a play. Uh, are, are those issues dealt with as well? They are, in a, but not, it's not a philosophy course. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's not a theology lesson. But indeed, um, uh, they get to express their concerns and how they lost their faith. The thing is, when they go to seminary, they learn that the Bible isn't the inerrant word of God. And the ones that learn that in the seminary, the ones, the, the lucky ones get out. Well, I didn't learn yeah. that in my Bible school. In my, in my Bible school training, we were taught that it was inerrant, but... Uh... <laughs> So, quick question, Megan, before we talk practical about how people can get get tickets and so on. Uh, this must have been a very different kind of play for you to help produce compared to uh, Natasha and the Comet. Uh, must have you must have learned a lot. Oh, absolutely. Um, though I this isn't in fact the first uh, work based on documentary that I've I've produced. I'm I'm also adapting uh, a particle physics documentary into a musical, and I I think wow. that some of the most extraordinary drama comes from real life. It real life is magnificent and beautiful and imaginative, and there's so much to be mined there. And so this was. Um, you know, th this was certainly the first time I've collaborated with a philosopher and a qualitative researcher in developing new work. Uh, but it was just a complete joy, and, and I'm so glad we did. And I hope people do come and see it. 
Well, now you're leaving us hanging. Uh, particle physics and a musical? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a real challenge. <laughs> it, that is, that is uh, also a real challenge and a real joy, and uh, hopefully will be announced um, later this year. Yeah, what rhymes with quantum and quark and muons? <laughs> 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 Maybe I'll take a stab at writing a song about that. So, uh, Dan, Dennett, are you working on anything new? Well, I've just finished an autobiography, which will be out wow. in the next year or so. And I've got a few uh, 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 serious papers that I'm working on for cognitive science journals and conferences. Does the autobiography have a title or a working title? It does. I've been thinking. I can think. I've been thinking. Oh, I've been I've thinking. Been thinking. Oh, oh, that's, that's cute. That is good. That's that is great. cute. Huh. Well, well we have lots of things to look forward to theatrically and with books. So we're looking forward to this this unbelieving play. It sounds so different and so exciting. So, Megan, uh, tell us about the size of the theater. We have about 60 seconds here. And where people can get tickets. And how people can get tickets to this. Absolutely. If you go to 59e59.org, uh, you can buy tickets there for The Unbelieving. We're going to be in Theater B, which holds 99 seats. Uh, and we are nearly sold out for previews, but we do have uh, tickets left towards uh, the center of the run. Wow. So E59, E, uh, you say 59, that what? E59, for 59 East 59. And is the play just Friday, Saturday, Sunday? We're running uh, Tuesday through Sunday at 7.15 for our evening performances and 2.15 for matinees. Well, thank you, Daniel C. Dennett, philosopher and author. And thank you, producer Megan Kingry, for joining us today on Free Thought Matters. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters. I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason.